We are live for Lunch Break Live, making terrific tacos with Alexis Sanchez of Mercy for Animals and the amazing Carissa Krant. You are extraordinary, and I'm glad you're wearing that. Okay, watch it with the sound on the on the plates. plates. Paige Parsons Roach, our fabulous booker, who's also here, and we're at a very special place. We're at um, Roger Wilson's fabulous home, and tell us. While we are cooking, because we're about to get started, we're chopping away, we've got you chopping away, but tell us very quickly, what is Bev Veg? You're an attorney and you've, a vegan attorney, you've started something. Yes, so I'm a lawyer and I was born a vegan and I decided to find a way to merge my passion and purpose in this life, which is being very compassionate towards animals, but also having the education behind me of a lawyer and making it my profession. So what does that mean? That means I started a company called BevEdge International and my law firm manages BevEdge and BevEdge does vegan certification worldwide. We have two logos, one for beverages and one for all other products. And we, in other words, to determine, are they really vegan? Like when yes. you look, at an avocado, you know that's vegan. Yes. When you look at a lime, when you look at uh, this garlic. garlic, you know it's vegan because it's whole food. Right. But there's a lot of products. And what's this? This is artichoke heart. Hearts Ooh, of palm. Hearts of, hearts of palm. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. You know those are vegan. Yes. But you're talking about products, right? Right. I'm talking about products that have ingredients and source ingredients in it, that have uh, possible shared machinery, that have factories that do bottling that need to be investigated and the possibility of cross-contamination. And what BevEdge does is we set out a single standard because vegan is not defined anywhere, nor is it regulated by the FDA, the USDA, or the Tobacco and Trade Bureau. And while there are other vegan logos out there, they are not really regulated by any government entity. And by nature, Nature, lawyers are regulators. So my law firm set out a vegan standard and definition, which you can find on the BevEdge website, which we use as a guide when certifying products and asking for disclosures and third party affidavits and researching and investigating the entire process of how a final product was made. And we also ask that there's no animal testing on the final product. So BevEdge is managed by my law firm. It's a vegan certification thing. It's worldwide. And we have a free app to download, which is catalogs over 50,000 alcoholic beverages and you can find out if they're certified vegan, not vegan, or claim to be vegan and are self-certifying, which is constantly updated. So you should download that because if you don't know, a lot of wine, spirits, and liqueurs are filtered through animal parts. Ooh, and, and sugar. Sugar. Oh, sugar too. Right, so that's another good point, James. So sugar, they can often disguise as natural charcoal, which is actually bone char. And so at Bevage, we research quote, insignificant ingredients and quote, incidental ingredients, which the FDA and the USDA do not require disclosures of. And a lot of times those incidental and insignificant ingredients or natural colorings and natural flavorings are actually animal products. And the government allows you to round down to zero if you have less than 0.5 grams of something per serving. That can really add up. So Bevage really lays out a standard, which as a vegan, you would want to know that your product was actually verified and looked into to hold the company accountable. I also think this is important because it's not just about being vegan, it's about being conscious and about truth and transparency and labeling. And I think that everybody wants truth and transparency, whether it's politics, whether it's your food labels, whether it's in a relationship that you're in, it doesn't matter. You want to know what you're ingesting and you want honest information. That's what we're here to do. Wow, what a great sales pitch. Carissa Krantz, attorney and vegan since birth. Yes, so my mom had a vegan pregnancy against all doctor's orders and I turned out fine, yeah, I think. And, uh, you I was also did. a professional ballet dancer and that's also, I think, important because people always said to me growing up, how do you get your protein or, you know, are, how are you weak? And I think, or aren't you weak? And the level of prima ballerina that I reach and the level of athleticism I reach speaks volumes that the diet of veganism actually works. And I think it's also 
really key to see that all these NFL players now are catching on and becoming vegan on the front line. So um, I'm actually really excited. You know about that documentary or movie Game yeah, Changers? Yeah, Game Changers. Now, wait, I can't wait, wait to on see that. Second. We are also here. Game Changers. Thank you, Carissa. We also have a wonderful young lady, Alexis Sanchez from Mercy for Animals, and she um, is putting together Hearts of Palm tacos. So let me get around the bend here and watch you put these into the stove because that's a key aspect. Now these are canned hearts of palm, but we can certify that they're vegan. They're just hearts of palm. There's one ingredient. So that's it. And of course with whole foods, it's easy to certify that something is vegan because an avocado is an avocado, a banana is a banana. But when it comes to products that have a lot of ingredients, it's hard to tell. Now, what, what are you putting in here? This is a mixture of black pepper, salt, and paprika, and we put Ooh. it on to season. Black pepper, salt, and paprika. See, yes. seasoning is so important. Now, I noticed you put a little olive oil there, and now you're mixing the spices with the hearts of palm. This is terrific. Wow, and while you do that, what do you just saute them until brown or? We're gonna saute them until they're golden, until they look like they're ready to eat. Then we're gonna put them on a tortilla, serve them up, and they should be good. We're just All right. gonna let them sit here for a little while. Okay, terrific. So they're just gonna saute. And what was the combination again of spices? It is salt, black pepper, and paprika. And we need one table, uh, teaspoon, sorry, of each of those. And okay, then we... that's very simple, salt, black pepper and paprika. And over here we have Paige Purses Roach chopping the onions. <laughs> An amazing, our booker who put this together. Thank you, Paige. Let me tell you something. Alexis uh, was the um, organizer for the event that you spoke at at Mercy for Animals on Saturday. So we met and Carissa was here as well, coming as, a, as an attendee. And she told me that she knows how to cook and I thought, oh my goodness, let's get her in the kitchen as in Alexis, and she's a student. I don't know if you know this, she's a student at Cal State Northridge University, right? Oh, wonderful. Son. Oh, and good. she plans to go law, pre-law. Oh and my gosh, so you're, you're in the right place. So you're gonna be a lawyer. Yeah, I and, actually wanna go in for environmental law and animal rights law, so. Oh, how wonderful. Well, that guess what? Great. Here's a brand of this. <laughs> I can give you all sorts of advice. <laughs> you wanna be a lawyer. All right, excellent, yeah. excellent. And I'm not a lawyer, but people think I am. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny because I've covered uh, news stories for many years um, and I can tell you I've seen I will say this I've seen some of the best lawyers in the world uh, do their opening closing statements and I've been in the courtroom for those trials look at that we are making hearts of palm tacos here at the amazing also activist and commissioner of Los Angeles Animal Services Roger Wolfson wait a second you're just putting the you just put the, you just boil the tomato? We boil the tomato, chili, and garlic to make the salsa. Oh, so it's just wow. gonna be like the dressing that we put on top. Very spicy, so I hope Wait, you guys like spicy that's food. That's wild. I you, I, I love spicy. You literally boil, I've never seen that. You just boil the tomato. You just put the tomato right in there. Exactly, and then after that, we blend it in the blender and it yeah. should be good to go. Wow, that's amazing. So who knew? I never knew you could just throw a tomato in, in a pot of boiling water. It never occurred to me. How's this doing? It's doing Let's that. see. Whoa, look at that. And you've also got the garlic in there too, right? A little bit of garlic? No, we actually oh. don't have garlic okay. in here. Yeah, um, um, because, oh wow. Because we, well, we have yeah. the actual garlic flakes in it. We don't have the actual garlic powder. Okay, so, so what's ready. this? This is a vegetable broth, vegan okay. of course. Vegan vegetable so broth. All right. Just to give it a little okay. bit more flavor. All right. So we're flavoring those up because, you know, hearts of palm don't inherently have a lot of flavor. Yes, exactly. They're kind of flavorless. So, so is a lot of animal, so are a lot of animal products that we, I, you know, that people eat uh, a chicken. Nobody would want to eat a chicken without any flavoring at all. So let's see these cans. You can just go get hearts of palm uh, like that anywhere. Any, these are sprouts, but hearts of palm, very easy. You put them in a pan, you uh, spice them up with some paprika, salt, pepper, uh, and uh, some veggie broth, and uh, we're gonna hit the next aspect of it. I was just gonna say, the one thing is, she was, uh, Alexis was telling me that she usually makes jackfruit tacos, and then she wanted to try this new 
hard to pump because they're when you go out and order you can order these as well and it's the texture so it kind of yeah. gives like a little bit of a i don't miss chicken at all but a chickeny sort of texturized yeah when you look in the pan you can tell it's yeah. gonna be yeah it's gonna break oh, up nicely yum, yum, and yum. all the flavorings so you're not gonna you don't miss anything you know it's easier to find hard to pump than it is jackfruit i love jackfruit but it can be hard to find so it's more of a specialty item. You can go into any supermarket and find hearts of pump. What's happening over here? We've got a lot of action happening in the kitchen. We're here with the amazing attorney, Carissa Krantz, who has BevEdge, which is a vegan food certification and beverage certification company. And we're also here with a pre, um, a, a, a young woman who is your undergrad right now yes. at Cal State Northridge, but you're hoping to do pre-law. Correct. Oh, wonderful. So. There you go, a lawyer and somebody who wants to be a lawyer. Um, and both of them are vegan and both of them are activists. But I'm learning from her in the kitchen. That's because right. <laughs> I might have been born and raised vegan, but I relied on my mom for the excellent cooking. So I'm learning a whole lot right now. Yeah, this is great. She's amazing. I'm Where did you learn her. to cook? Just from your family? Actually, yeah. my mom. She's helped me a, a ton with vegan recipes. Um, and just I yesterday, yeah. I quickly put this together. Um, it's a new recipe, so hopefully you all like it. And if you try it at home, see what the viewers are missing right now is they can't smell what yeah. we smell. Uh, it's like fabulous. we smell these delicious spices, the cilantro, the garlic, the paprika. It smells so good. I'm salivating. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really a great feeling. And you know, yeah. vegan cooking is fun. Because there's no death. There's no death. It's totally peaceful. Right. No I'm, I'm really enjoying cooking. Uh, actually lately uh, at night because um, I find that people keep bringing me vegetables. Like I did a photo shoot yesterday for a magazine and they brought a whole bunch of vegetables. So I thought I'll cook the vegetables for dinner and it was, turned out great. And of course I use spices. Um, now, what are we doing here? Right now we're cutting apart the avocado so that way we can use it as a garnish after the tacos are done. Okay. So we're gonna cover it with onion, some cilantro, avocado, put some lime on it, and then we have the salsa already baking. Okay. Um, the salsa should actually look like this. Oh, when it's done? Okay, when why don't we put done. that in a nice bowl, and we're gonna show, put that in a nice bowl, and we'll show everybody the salsa. And, um, yeah, so we're putting it all together. There we go. Um, all right, and, okay, there we go. There's the salsa. So, in other words, what, what's happening is this was simply a toma two tomatoes and the jalapeno boiled? Exactly. Oh, that's and then, what was in there? That's exactly what's going on in here. Oh. This is going to be fresh for us because it's oh, wait, wait. salsa's better warm with the tacos. So wait, you, you, you boiled the tomato and the jalapeno. I may have to come around the bend yeah. again and, and hit this because it's very interesting. I it never even occurred to me, how do you make a uh, salsa? But okay, so... How do you know when it's done? Um, you just kind of have to play around with it. They should both be soft. Okay, so you're trying to soften. There's two giant jalapenos in there, and there's two tomatoes. And there's also garlic. And One there's gar garlic. and a whole garlic. Yes. Just tossed in. Just tossed in. Just hold it. So this is what's, hold that a little higher, because I think this is incredible. So to make great salsa, you don't have to do a lot of chopping. What you probably do is some smushing afterwards, right? <laughs> exactly. So when you take this out, what do you do? You just literally smush it together or put yeah. it in a blender? Yeah, actually. Or um, a, 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 what do you call it, Cuisinart? I, I learned this salsa from my grandmother. She grew up in Mexico. And so we basically use something in my culture called the morcajete. And we just grab it all and just start smushing it. Okay. So that's the best way to make the salsa to get all the flavors combined, and it's so yeah. good. Okay, but yeah. if you had to, you could use like a blender. Of course. And just put it in a blender. So there you go. That is the secret sauce. And can we do a check on our beautiful um, hearts of palm? Of course. Be careful there. I don't want you to burn your hand. Okay, look at this. These are hearts of palm. Uh, are we going to be using vegan cheese, Tom wants to know? We could, but we're not using it in this recipe okay, today. Well, but I you mean, if could you use cheese, vegan cheese, the great thing about vegan cooking, you can use whatever you want. Now, are you gonna sort of you're gonna smush those too? Yep. Now, if okay. you just smush it, that okay, way you can get so, like a meaty texture. Okay. So when they're soft enough, you just kind of smush them. Exactly. And that's it. Okay. Exactly. And and how much is it? Was it water or oil that was in there? We actually just used oil. We sauteed garlic with oil, and then okay. after that, we added the heart of palms, the seasoning. Okay. And then the um the veggie broth. Mm. And that nice yellow texture and color is from 
the veggie broth as well as the cilantro, not cilantro, what did you the put paprika. in? Paprika. Paprika makes it red. Yeah. Or orangey. Yeah. That looks good, yeah. So, oh, wow, that is terrific. This is Hearts of Palm Tacos. You can make this at home. Literally just take a can of, this, what I like about this is an easy recipe because let's say you were to get the, um, the salsa pre-made, right? Because that's, that's let, let's say, you know, in today's world, like we get the salsa pre-made, we have the tacos. Yes. All we need to do is open a can of Hearts of Palm, pop it in there with some oil, some salt, some paprika, some pepper, cook it up, and voila, you've got, um, uh, uh, You've well, got well, tacos. tacos. Yeah, a hearts of palm. I don't. I don't know. I mean, look. Let me tell you. Since somebody says it's hearts of palm politically correct, let me tell you something. <laughs> any any vegetable product is more politically correct than eating animals. Especially okay? one that has the word hearts in it. Yeah. Right. That's compassionate <laughs> yeah. eating. Um, and uh, I I'll have to do some research on hearts of palm. But let me tell you something. Uh, it takes. Uh, animals eat 40 times what they produce as food, uh, up to 40 times. So you want to talk about destruction of the environment. It's the forests that are being destroyed to grow crops, not to feed people. When you see all that cropland, when you see all that farmland, that's not feeding people. It's feeding farm animals. In fact, 70, more than 70% of all soy produced is fed to farm animals. Most people don't know that. No, most people don't know that. And I think that it doesn't matter why you choose to become vegan, if it's environmental, if it's health, if it's compassion for animals. There are so many reasons to become vegan that it's just a matter of understanding and picking one of them. And most likely when you pick one and you understand that one, you're gonna get on the bandwagon and you're gonna become an advocate for all the reasons because... Yes, many people start because of their health. They've had a heart attack or whatever and they... Um, then wake up and they go, oh my God, you know, I, I need to change. And then they start finding out about the cruelty. They start finding out about the environmental impact. And then they, they embrace that too. Now you've been vegan since birth yes. and you are now a prominent attorney. You've appeared on many television shows. Um, and uh, do you see the world changing? Are, are we gonna hit that vegan tipping point in 2019? Um, the tipping point, a defined tipping point, right? Just like you have to define a vegan standard. I was born vegan and when I was raised vegan, it was totally weird to be vegan. I was judged all the time. I would go out to eat and everyone would pick on me. Now, when I go out to eat, people say to me, do you mind if I order meat? So to me, that indicates that there's been a shift, that people are more conscious of their choices and everywhere I go, there's always more vegan, vegetarian, plant-based eaters. Um, when the whole world will be vegan and there will be an end to suffering, I don't know. I hope to be part of the movement and the shift though because it's certainly been my life purpose. Okay, and you know, for those talking about um, uh, what some products that are plant-based may have an impact, again, let me just say this. Uh, less than a third of the Earth's surface is land. Of that land, uh, almost 45% is used for agriculture. And of that, almost half of all viable land is used for agriculture. And of that viable land, 83% is used for animal agriculture. So when you think about it, uh, you could pick nets and say, well, this, they have to do this, they have to do that. But the truth is that the best way to stop habitat destruction and wildlife extinction is to go vegan because it is those very um, habitat destruction, the very habitat destruction that is happening mm -hmm. to grow crops to feed 70 billion land animals, cows, pigs, tur turkeys, chickens, and lambs. That is the primary, primary reason why we are causing extinction, not any plant-based foods. Right, and we're, we're ruining the environment with global warming with it. I know the statistics also say that all the greenhouse gases that are produced from slaughterhouses and killing and raising animals is more than every transportation system, planes, cars, etc. So we are ruining our planets, we are ruining our habitat, we are ruining our own health, we are ruining our consciousness, we are ruining our compassion, and we are contributing to suffering. It is Ooh. time to go vegan. 
And yes, it is. And it's time to also look at the, here we go. This is the salsa going from the pot into the um, sieve. Okay, and then there it is. So that's all you need. There's jalapeno, there's a full garlic in there somewhere, and there's two boiled tomatoes. And now we're gonna then take it from there and put it in here. All right, so come on over here. Okay, thank you, my dear. Uh, really, really expertly done. Look at this. And so that, then that's gonna be this. Yes. Yeah, so then this is the 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 three ingredients right out of the pot, and then this is the final homemade salsa. So that's how you make homemade salsa. If you didn't know, you don't chop up the tomato. You boil the tomato and the jalapeno and the garlic whole, and then. After they're soft, you put them in a drainer and then you smush them up. Now, should we see what's happening with the main ingredient here? Um, let's see, wow, okay. So there we go. Okay, so it's almost done. It looks like it's really Yeah, it's quite... just about done. So all, right. um, all we have to do now is warm up the tortillas and then garnish it and plate it up. Okay, sounds good. All right, so we're having a debate over this. Um, and they say, somebody else says that they have, they can harvest up to 40 hearts of palm from one plant. All right, you guys continue to debate the hearts of palm uh, while we tell you that, you know what, the most important thing you can do is actually to go vegan. So, um, all right, let's get cooking and, okay, perfect. So we're gonna have Paige help us That's set crazy. up and we have a very special guest as well who is going to be coming down, sure. Roger Wolfson. Now, are you going to heat up the, um, uh, yes. what are these? What do we got here? So we have white corn tortillas. You can okay. either use the stove to warm it up, or you can put them in the microwave and then warm Roger. them up that way. Or a toaster oven. Or the toaster oven. Okay. Roger. Okay, not yet. It's going to take us about a minute to get there. Terrific. Okay, let's toast them in the toaster oven. How about that? Okay. Okay, so there we go. Will you help? Absolutely. Okay, um, yes. And um, so again, these are very basic ingredients that we are using. Look how pretty, look how delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you, you're in the, the world of law and like myself, you've done a lot of commentary on television shows mm -hmm. about the law. Do you notice the, the sort of legal community changing about this? Because sure, you know, back in the day, um, it was it, it was mocked, but then things started changing. I mean, I even noticed it. Having done TV for 40 years, yeah. uh, I noticed that around 2015, okay, approximately four years ago, things really started to change. Like uh, where I work, there were very few vegan options, and then one day I walked in and there were vegan options everywhere in the cafeteria of, of a major media outlet. Yeah, things are definitely changing. I think that the media airwaves are mostly still talking about law and crime and um, like you did court TV and I did the long crime show with Dan Abrams, which is going live into the courtrooms and covering the world's the country's biggest murder trials. I think the TV is still covering human issues and human suffering and human atrocities but what you're doing that's so cool and different is you're getting into the animal atrocities and raising awareness which i think is a better definition of humanity because humanity should be kind and compassionate and kind and compassionate means you take your ego out of it and you're kind and compassionate to all sentient beings not just human beings so that is real social justice as a lawyer from my perspective and I Absolutely um, love that, and I agree. I said I'm still covering crime. I'm just covering crime against animals, and let me let me just tell you, I don't want to get too graphic, but it's a rape, abduction, and murder operation. It's a holocaust. It's a holocaust. There's no difference between a slaughterhouse versus the concentration camps where Jews were trucked off to and gays were trucked off to years ago and put into ovens and killed in, in the masses. It's no different for animals, and it really is important to raise awareness and give a voice to the voiceless and to understand that not only are we contributing to the suffering, but by eating it, you're ingesting the suffering, which has a karmic consequence. And, and let me say, because some people might be offended, is, is people who have actually gone through the Holocaust, like Alice Hershaft, who is a Holocaust survivor, who is the head of the farm animal rights movement, 
um, has led it for years and has been a major leader in the animal rights movement and started the Animal Rights Conference, he himself has made that point. So um, certainly, um, I'm, I think we just quote him. And, and in fact, uh, that was his inspiration for becoming an animal rights activist. And I'm Jewish too. So by, you know, I know what my family members went through as a German Jew in the Holocaust. And I really think it comes down to understanding. So here's an example. My parents got divorced when I was about five and I had to go to my dad's house half the week. And um, my mom was the vegan, my dad was not. So my mom said, your dad's gonna try to feed you meat. You do what you want, but this is what it is. So I made a conscious moral decision at that point that I was not gonna have anything to do with meat in my life. So I went to my dad's house and lo and behold, he tried to put chicken on my plate. And I said to him, I don't wanna eat that chicken, dad, it's an animal. It's meat. And he said, it's not meat. It's not red meat, it's white meat. And I said, there's not a difference between red meat and white meat. I think you're racist. And my dad looked at me. How old were you? Five. <laughs> and my dad. Now they call it speciesist. <laughs> my dad looked at me like he didn't know what his daughter was, what planet I came from. He didn't know what to do with me, but he learned to never put meat on my plate again because I had a complete resolve to have nothing to do with the eating an animal. So, and when people say, oh, it's so inconvenient. When a five-year-old can make that determination. And let me say that my mother, when she was about five, made that determination. She was born on Vieques Island, which is part of Puerto Rico. And she had a pet pig, or she thought that she had a pet pig. And she came home one day, around the same age, and she, her pig had been slaughtered for food. Oh and God. she fainted, and she shunned food from that moment on. And she was only five. And then when she married my dad, who was Irish and was a big meat eater, she convinced him to go mostly meat, meatless. Now, we thought we were vegetarians, but we weren't because we ate fish and we ate dairy. And it took, you know, an additional journey for me to go vegan. Uh, but um, I just, uh, people are just so jazzed that you, they said, Douglas says, no wonder she became a lawyer. You were a lawyer even at that age. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. You were arguing your case was, against your dad or treating your dad as the judge, right? I was determined and if I have my mind made up about something and I feel it with conviction, which is a strong belief in something, watch out. Which is how I feel about BevEdge, by the way, and the labeling and the disclosures. I think it's so important to have access to honest information and to raise consciousness through a label because some people, like I know you're covering these slaughterhouses and these vigils and for me, I like can't even attend those things. They break my spirit. But by being a part of a conscious label and a conscious movement that gives honest information and really looks into the process and the ingredients, I feel like I'm contributing to the cause and the shift in a way that is inspiring for people to look for that good housekeeping seal of approval rather than being forced to see a pig get slaughtered because it's heartbreaking to see any of that stuff. It just is. It but is. we have to see it. People have to see it. I just, I have a hard time seeing it. Yes, we all have a hard time, but we do it because we want to expose the truth and show people who think that their hamburgers and their chicken nuggets, etc., fall out of trees that no, you've co-signed, you've signed off on the killing of an animal. And there's no nice way to put it. You know, when oh, you covered crime, if you yeah. order a hit, if you order a hit on somebody, you're just as guilty as the person who actually carries out the hit. You can go to prison for murder. Yes. And that's, so it's the same thing. There's no distinction. I would like to see you do a story where you take some of those legal principles and apply them to uh, what's happening to animals because that could almost be a legal show. Well, it could be a legal show. I mean, it, it's kind of interesting. The documentary Cowspiracy is kind of like conspiracy, right? Which is a legal term. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, absolutely. It's false imprisonment. It's murder. It's rape. I mean, even to make dairy, these cows are raped. They're on a rape rack. 
They yes. are raped. That's and the then, industry term, rape rack. You can look it up. You can Google it. It's not something we made up. No, it's, it's a real thing. And then their babies are taken from them at birth and they are robbed of their ability to breastfeed from their mom. They are taken away from their families prematurely and then they are cooped up as false imprisonment in a little cell so they can be slaughtered to be soft meat or veal. It is a, such a cruel, cruel. And you are absolutely, it's cruel and now let's go from cruel to cool. <laughs> we have Roger Wolfson in the house because it's his house. Hey, Thank everyone. you, Roger. How you doing, Jane? How, how you doing, audience? Beautiful people. Um, we're also excited to be talking to Carissa and as well to get the incredible recipe that Alexis of Mercy for Animals whipped up. She wants to be a lawyer and Carissa is a lawyer using her legal skills to create a basically good, good housekeeping seal of approval for vegan products. And I know you're doing so much as commissioner of Los Angeles Animal Services. Well, I'm also a lawyer as well. So you have a whole bunch of lawyers here that really want to help you out and really want to support you. And I just can't tell you how happy I am to see all of you here and to see the beauty that you brought into my home. And could we get a shot of the dogs as well? <laughs> yes, of course. My beloved shelter dogs who are also Oh, here. let's see the shelter dogs. Hi, guys. There we go. I forget uh, <laughs> Easy. Let's see. This is easy. Oh, it's hi, miracle. baby. Look at that little angel. Look at that angel. And that's miracle. Oh, miracle. Oh, And they're, they're just hoping that some of this magnificent food falls <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> and you think they're going to like uh, tacos, well, vegan they, tacos. They love, I actually think these they dogs love their veggies. are so unusually peaceful because they're vegan. Yes. I've never seen dogs this peaceful in my life. These yeah. dogs are the most peaceful dogs you've ever seen. They're peaceful oh, beings. Oh, yeah. Well, we're V-Dog is one of our sponsors, and our dogs are eating V-Dog. Hey, and... these are V-Dog dogs. Oh, yeah. These are the V-Dog dogs. Look at this. Look oh, at this. Oh, wow. Jane, Jane, do you see and, the, do you oh, see the miracles look doing? at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. And Ellen Andrea Dent wants to say thank you, Roger, for coming to some of her pig vigils that she organizes with her oh, an amazing team from Animal Alliance Network. She's watching. And he was also at the Santa Anita funeral vigil yesterday, which Jane Unchained also covered. Wow, this is beautiful. Now we want to take some photos. So we're going to put Paige in charge of those photos. Take that little thing off. So I think, you know, how to handle a hungry man, the man handlers. Remember that? They're safe. <laughs> The man handlers. I think even before you, Carissa. All right, he ran upstairs, so we're gonna get we're gonna get you yeah, taste testing. Sure you oh, okay. Oh wow, here we go. Hold on. There's Roger up there taking a picture Roger of that. us. There Roger that. Roger that. <laughs> so all right, we want you to taste test. Oh, God, Did yes. you mention yet that? We will, but I, yes, and I want to get this taste test going. All right, should All I right. really be the first, though? I mean, come on. I think yes. the person who cooked it should be the first. All right. Well, yeah. no, I'll taste it. Okay, okay you first. taste it. You well, taste how do I it. taste it? You, you gotta tell me. me. I'm learning. So I'm teaching her law, and she's teaching me how to be in the kitchen. Okay, well, you um, just pick it up and you eat it. No, but I think you're supposed to add stuff. Oh, you are, you so, right. You are so right. You are so right. So, yeah, so tell us here. Okay. Okay. And you can go ahead and add as much cilantro as you want. So go ahead and add you too. All right. We'll oh, go. the cilantro. Yeah, Ooh, right. that's beautiful. And it's probably very, very nutritious, cilantro. Here we go. Mm, there we go. All right. And then this is hot homemade salsa that oh we God. just made. Wow. Um, oh, what? Christy Warfield says, never heard of vegan. What does that mean? Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Welcome to a whole new world. We welcome you, Christy. Oh, yeah, Christy. We love you. <laughs> welcome to our family, Christy. What uh, is yeah. up? Yeah. Vegan, vegan means no meat, no dairy. But actually, you know, rather than saying the nose, vegan means eating nutritious, wonderful, plant-based food. It That's actually, what it means. It, it's actually a, a compassionate lifestyle to be vegan That's and not to have animal products and that's where beverage comes in to define a vegan standard yes so that's where I you can go to that. our website at beverage 2 vs -E 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 com, and you can see the vegan standard which defines what vegan really is which is like roger said no animal products no animal byproducts no meat no dairy no suffering no Aww. animal cruelty <laughs> really well done let's hear it for alexis yes. Woo! Yes. 
that's a really nice definition, Chris. So yeah. Thank you for that. Now, let me ask you, could a product approach you and say, hey, we'd like to get your certification? Yes, that's actually okay. what's been happening. Oh, that has been happening. I'm trying so, online. So you'll have, okay, here we go. The moment of truth. Um, and we'll keep, why don't we keep one at least out yeah, for the pretty photo. Yeah, that one's pretty. Yeah, so we'll leave that for the pretty photo. Here, let's see. Okay, here we go. This is time right, for the taste it? test. Oh boy, I'm ready. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we All go. All right. <laughs> taste tester number one, taste mm. tester number two. And it's supposed to be a little sloppy. Mm. <laughs> so oh good. my God. <laughs> oh, wow. man. Slow mm. your it. Yeah. I wow. just came up with this recipe yesterday, be honest. Really? You came so up with it yesterday? I did. Wow, incredible. Mm. Wow, that is mm. fantastic. I totally have so, now, so you basically take the salsa, and this is the salsa. It's just that this is a little bit more pureed. That's a little thicker. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what would happen if you were to blend it, and this is what happens if you just smush it. Smush it. it. Yeah, you don't like the smush. Delicious. I think it's it's got a lot of jalapeno. You could get a very spicy bite there. It does. So you just yes. like that. Yes. And then you squeeze a lime mm. on it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Wow, look at that. So healthy. There you go. Oh, yes. And you're going to be coming to Veg Fest, of course, I right? I am. I'm going to be at Veg Fest May 5th. So I hope you guys are excited. I'm pretty excited. Say hi. It's actually, speaking of tacos and Mexican food, it's happening on Cinco de Mayo. And it's going to have a Cinco de Mayo theme. We've already got a mariachi. There's going to be 10 other bands, incredible speakers, including the new president of Mercy for Animals, Leia Garces, uh, Gene Bauer of Farm Leia Sanctuary. Gene. Yeah, as well as uh, Renee King Sonin, Judy Mancuso of Social Compassion, Rowdy Girl Sanctuary. We've got a lot of great speakers. Uh, uh, Los Angeles Animal Saves, Amy G. Davis, Ellen Andrea Dent, who is watching this video. So we're we're really excited about that. You're gonna come to Veg Fest, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah, it's it's uh, my a, favorite day. Absolutely my favorite I day. I wanna speak too. Okay. Oh, we, we should have you speak. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Well, okay, now to. that now that you're offering yourself, <laughs> um, we are going to then be all over that. Uh, we will make something very special happen for you Thank next you. year. Yes. You know, I think of you, Roger, as this extraordinarily busy man who's in Hollywood, who's also politically uh, connected and doing all sorts of things politically, who's also the commissioner of Los Angeles Animal Services. And so I think of you as a very busy guy that I, who I don't want to bother. Maybe I'm going to have to start bothering you more. It's never a bother. What you do, Jane, is what I care about the most. It yeah. really is. I mean, th these issues are profoundly important. And, you know, I think you also know that I do some work with the Non-Human Rights Project, which fights for the innate legal rights of animals. You know, as opposed to the, a lot of other animal rights organizations that are f fighting for animal welfare, just laws that make their lives a little bit better. The Non-Human Rights Project fights for the innate rights of animals so that we recognize them in the same way that sort of um, a corporation can be a person, legally can be a person that has its own inherent rights. So should elephants, so should dolphins, um, so should all animals at some level. But, but Non-Human Rights Project is fighting for elephants and primates at this stage, and they're doing incredible work all around the world. Wow, how amazing, and yes, and I wanna thank you, Roger, for inviting me to the Jane Goodall event yeah. that was put on by, I believe, the Non-Human Rights Project. It was. Really incredible, it was Jane Goodall Day at LA City Hall, and she urged everybody to ditch the meat for the planet and for their own health and to stop cruelty, but, but people do listen to her. All right, is it time for my taste test? I can't wait, woohoo! All right, here we go. And so, Paige, I do want to say something because one thing that warmed my heart was when I was reading about Carissa, is she's taking care of her ballet teacher. Now, did you all know that she was a professional dancer, a ballerina, right? Mm. For how many years? Oh, gosh. I was, my mom was a ballet teacher and a dance professional on Broadway and did ballet professionally, so I was born into it. So literally wow. my whole life. Um, my last performance was in 2015. Ooh, so not too long ago. No, and I still go to ballet class. Oh, my so, God. So once a dancer, right, what always don't a you do? You're an attorney. You started a certification program for um, vegan products. You're a professional ballerina. <laughs> you are a very, very, very um, amazing 
And and I'm so overwhelmed. I'm going to take. It's also in the way of my food right now, <laughs> which is really dangerous. Mm. Well, the other thing that really mm. warmed my heart is mm. how you are taking care of your ballet teacher mm. who is dealing with Alzheimer's. Mm. Yes, you have taken her out of a one-star home and you brought her mm. home. Mm -hmm. I brought her into my house. Her. And yes. I know that we saw a story, so you can go on. This on is her website. so good. I have to interject. Oh, okay. This is so good. You are a good person, and this is Great. so good. Mm. So good fared. Share with Ms. us. Miss Joan, let's hear about Miss Joan. Miss um, Joan, yes. Yeah, so I actually just did a podcast on this on Main Street Vegan about a week ago Ooh, with Victoria with Man, or Victoria, Victoria, yeah, Moran. Victoria Moran. And the whole it was it was streamed live on Unity Radio as well. And the whole theme is that vegans don't just care about uh, animals mm. that true vegans understand and care about all beings and sometimes vegans are attacked for not caring about human beings so this story was used as an example of a lifelong vegan who cares about all beings and the example was what I did with my ballet teacher Miss Joan in a nutshell I danced with her since I was about six years old and she was an amazing woman, but she never got married. She never had kids of her own. Her parents are dead. And she ran the Palm Beach Ballet Center for 57 mm. years. She fell sick to Alzheimer's. And when she, her mind started to fail her, her studio was taken from her. Her home was foreclosed. Her animals were confiscated to animal control. She was into animal rescue. So she was a total animal person. And um, I found her in a one-star county nursing facility in a ward room with five beds and five roommates. And it broke my heart. I had graduated the studio about a decade before. I had assumed her life would be fine. She always had a zillion parents and students around her. But her life wasn't fine. She had no advocate. Mm -hmm. And um, I had always felt like I had let her down to a point because I danced for free at the Palm Beach Ballet Center my whole life. I was on scholarship. She made me a prima ballerina. I got into American Ballet Theater, New York City Ballet, and I didn't do it. I went to Berkeley Law School instead. And I know that I had let her down by doing that. When I found her in the nursing home, she was beginning Alzheimer's, not advanced. And she said to me, you're the only one that can change this and turn this around. So I took it upon myself because she understood then what she was asking for um, to take over power of attorney and move her into my house Aww. where she's been for the last six years and still is there. She is now very advanced Alzheimer's. We have 24 hour care. She goes to daycare during the day. We have meals on wheels, Medicaid pays for a lot of it. And um, it's been a big process, but it's certainly the reason I started my own law firm and got into compassionate justice and compassionate solutions. And um, Ms. Joan is still a part of my life and with me. <laughs> and you were saying that you learned something very profound from her. Yes, that's a good point. That Alzheimer's patients live in the now. And even though they're losing their mind, they can teach us profound lessons about mindfulness. And that's the whole point about the power of now and living in the now, which is I started a nonprofit called the Now Movement, which is this is the band, the Now Watch Band, the time is now. But when I was saying this, Jane said something very important, that animals also live in the now. So animals can teach us a lot about mindfulness and just being present. Those with Alzheimer's, even though the mind might be in de-evolution phase or they may not be in linear time, who's to say that they're wrong and we're right? Maybe their mind is evolutionary and maybe time isn't linear and maybe that it really is just about now. And when you made the incredible point that people like to say we care about animals, not people, it's so the opposite because we are trying to help people live healthy lives and avoid heart disease, which kills one out of every four people, which can be directly tied in most cases to consumption of meat and dairy, because heart disease is simply the artery to the heart, the arteries to the heart getting clogged with plaque. Plaque comes from cholesterol, and cholesterol only exists in animal products. So unless you're a rare person who has a genetic predisposition to high cholesterol, if you're eating animal products, you have a greater risk of heart disease. And so by we are helping people, we're also dealing with climate change. Animal agriculture is arguably the leading cause of climate change. It is indisputably the leading cause of habitat destruction, wildlife extinction, and human world hunger because animals eat 40 times what they produce as meat or dairy. And while we're only 7.7 .7 billion humans, we are killing 
in the range of 70 billion land animals. Think about all the food they're eating. They eat almost 40 times what they produce as meat or dairy. So no, if you care about children starving in a third world country, instead of just giving to a charity, you'd probably do more for those children by going vegan because you would stop taking the food that could go directly to them and eating it for yourself. We are fattening up billions of animals while humans starve to death. And the way we fatten them up is keeping them in confined conditions. When they're confined, they don't use as many calories. And so that's why we confine them, feed them intensively and slaughter them as babies. So we can then rape their mothers and start the whole process over again. I mean, it's morally wrong. It's also wrong from a health standpoint. It's wrong from a climate change standpoint. And um, so I get a little bit annoyed when people say that we don't care about people. And I, I wanna just jump in on yeah, that please too. jump because in, uh, uh, Roger as well, both of you. Just wanna say one thing to that because there's all the scientific evidence and things that you can point to, but then there's also the change of our heart. And I know that there's, quotes out there that so long as there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. I think that that is so key. It's not just how we are killing ourselves and our heart and our arteries and the planet. It's our minds and our hearts and souls that we're killing as well. Because so long as we are able to kill an animal and eat it, we are going to still be talking on TV as legal experts or as reporters like Jane does about crime. I stopped covering crime. I All right. Well, I haven't. I'm sad. I cut back. Okay. But like, that's what people are covering because we are desensitized. So, so long as there are crimes on people, that's we are we are fueling that because we're eating that. And when we change and we become more compassionate, we're going to have more compassion and less anger impulses towards each other. So I we're think- We're gonna evolve as a species. Yeah. Right now we're very primitive. We are gonna evolve. I know Roger yeah. wanted to jump oh, in and jump say in. something. Oh, jump in, come on, Roger. So I just, I just wanted to fill in a couple of the gaps. Well, can that, you come forward? Oh, sure. Yeah, thank you. I one is, one is the, the number that also, so the 70 billion land animals really affects me, but the other number that came as such a shock to me, and I only learned it about a year and a half ago, is the number of marine animals, which is 2.4 trillion marine animals being pulled out of the ocean every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it, you don't even need more of a statistic to realize that that's unsustainable. 2.4 trillion that are dying, mm -hmm. that don't need to die, mm -hmm. you know? And what I would also say too is about, um, towards Carissa's point uh, and to, to Jane's, is that there's a movie coming out really soon called Game Changers. All right, now Game Changers interviews the strongest man in the world, the best marathon runner, the best MMA fighter in the world, um, and a whole series of other athletes, um, a whole host of NBA players, all of whom are vegan. So when it, it's not just that it's healthier for you and you avoid illness, but it also is how you perform better. You also perform one of the greatest scenes in Game Changers, which is going to go viral the second the movie's out, it is, an inch, it is where they have three different NBA players. Have you seen this, Jane? I haven't seen the movie. I keep waiting okay. for it to come out. I'm well, excited. Well, they have these three NBA players, and the, the NBA players, um, they give them a meat meal, and then they put them to sleep, or just, you know, they go to sleep for the night, and they strap mechanisms to the men's penises. And they show, over the course of the night, how, how aroused these men get just through ordinary evening. And they show that all three men are functioning quite fine. Then... The next night, they give them one single vegan meal and test them again. And all the men have larger erections, longer <laughs> erections, more consistent erections. And the best part about this movie is watching the reaction on these guys' faces. When they're just like, because it, it just completely puts the lie to the idea that masculinity means meat. It's actually the opposite. The opposite. You know what? Uh I'm rarely speechless, but uh, <laughs> no, I agree with you 100% because as somebody said to me, a doctor said, you know, it's systemic heart disease. Actually, erectile dysfunction is a precursor of heart disease because the vessels in the venus are smaller than the vessels going to the heart. So and when Alzheimer's, by the way. There is a correlation that has been shown between Alzheimer's and meat diets. Mm -hmm. So this isn't just about, and again, I just want to stress, it's not just about health, it's about performance. You want to be healthier, not just avoid disease. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. That's how you do it.
Ooh, well, yeah. You Thank you, Roger Wilson. I think he deserves another taco. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> well, that's the last one. Well, no, no. Have one, one, one more. We've got okay, one for the photo, so yay. it's fine. Yay. Yes. Yeah, um, and so I, I think we've like covered everything. Um, maybe if you want to grab this or uh, do, I don't know if you want to say no, something. No, I'm great. good. This okay. is amazing. <clears throat> so I want to say I'm amazing. so honored to be with these incredibly evolved people who are doing such wonderful work and your sister too, who turned you vegan. Yes, she Who did. I met this weekend. Um, and I urge everybody to check out Bev Veg. You go to? www.bevveg.com and the app is free in the app stores. It's two Vs. So when you could get that on your phone and check to see if something's really vegan, and that's important. And Roger, thank you for everything you're doing on so many fronts with the Non-Human Rights Project with Los Angeles Animal Services. We're with... banning rodeos next. Woo! We're banning rodeos. I know you've been involved with the horse racing uh, horror, and thank you for what you do and Mercy for Animals. As a part of Mercy for Animals. MFA. 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 All right, guys. See you at. See you at Vegfest.